with Jonathan Swindler. Welcome to Look North, I'm Jonathan Swindler. A mother's 11 year wait for a kidney transplant could soon be over thanks to advances in technology. Gemma Louie from County Durham had a blood transfusion following a cesarean section, which means her blood contains antibodies which could attack any new organ. But it's hoped if a medical trial comes to the region, her life will be transformed. Jim Scott reports. This is a view that people like Gemma from Chesterley Street have to look at for up to 12 hours every single week. I have a condition, um, sort of an immune condition, that um, has gradually attacked my kidneys over time um, and eventually leading to needing dialysis. She is one of more than 300 people waiting for a new kidney in the northeastern Cumbria and being kept alive through dialysis. It's a bit like a part-time job. I feel like I've got two jobs. I have to go, I go to work during the day and on a night I go to dialysis, which is... If you include travel and time, getting on and off the machine, it's about six hours, three nights a week, and I can't ever do anything sort of on the spur of the moment. Nothing's ever last minute. Gemma is waiting for a pilot currently being trialled at a hospital in London. Medics say they are able to better match blood and tissue types to patients, reducing the risk of organs being rejected. If successful, places like this one, the NHS Blood and Transplant Centre in Newcastle, could offer the same treatment. It's rolled out across the country, could help hundreds more patients like Gemma to uh, get a well, well-matched transfusions to support their kidney transplant and um, hopefully reduce the chances of them rejecting. So get my life back. I mean, don't get me wrong, I do try and make the best of things, but, you know, I can... There's a lot of travelling I've missed out on. I have a huge bucket list. Um, and... You know, just, just sort of normality and um, hopefully feel better as well. Jim Scott, BBC Look North. Crowds gathered in Sunderland today for a memorial service for the footballer regarded by many as Sunderland's greatest ever player, Charlie Hurley, who died last month aged 87. A number of former Black Cats players and other big names from the sport attended the service at Sunderland's Minster. He was big in stature, but he was, you know, as a, as a person, as a man, you know, he was being revered uh, throughout Sunderland, and uh, quite rightly so, you know, and uh, he loved the place itself, you know, he fell in love with Sunderland, and they fell in love with him. Well, Charlie was a, a player that really bought into the community, the club, um, and the town as it was then, city now, and he, he loved, he loved it. He loved the city, he loved Sunderland, he loved being part of the club, he loved being part of the community, and we loved having him. Passengers are being warned to expect major disruption on the region's railways this week in another round of industrial action. There's currently an overtime ban among Asleff union members and walkouts from Wednesday will affect Avanti West Coast, followed on Thursday by LNER, Northern and TransPennine Express. Campaigners trying to save Tesaurus Park in Middlesbrough have submitted a bid to have three of these sculptures listed to ensure their conservation. The steel dinosaur herd on the southern bank of the River Tees could be moved as the council wants to accommodate gypsy and traveller pitches on the site. Middlesbrough Council says it's considering the issues raised during the public consultation. Now, a rare dye made from sea snails and for the robes of the Roman elite 2,000 years ago has been unearthed at Carlisle Cricket Club as part of ongoing yearly excavations. The lump of pigment, roughly the size of a ping-pong ball, has been confirmed as Tyrian purple by experts at Newcastle University. It's the first time the substance has been found in Britain. Jerry Jackson reports. Many treasures have been unearthed at the site, believed to be once home to the largest building on Hadrian's Wall. This latest find was documented on the TV programme Digging for Britain. If we have got purple pigment on this site, mm. you can't get any more imperial than that, can you? Because of course purple is the imperial colour. Yeah, nobody else is allowed to use it, was, you know, you'd be executed for yeah. using purple. Months of testing later, archaeology lab technicians at Newcastle University have confirmed it is Tyrian purple after they found traces of bromine and beeswax. It's been really exciting. Um, as I said, it's you know exciting because it's the first time it's been found here. It's been found in other you know other people found it in other places. 
um, mostly around the Mediterranean area. Described as the most expensive product in antiquity, it's estimated that around 10,000 sea snails were used to produce a single gram of the vivid purple dye. Archaeologically, it's priceless, but during, um, I think, in the early 4th century, it was worth three times the weight of gold. This is the most northern city in the Roman Empire. What people now think is a real provincial cul-de-sac. At one point, was, you know, probably front and centre of the Roman Empire. Jerry Jackson, BBC Look North. Now, how's the weather looking? Here's Keely with the forecast. Hello there, good evening. After a lively evening, you'll be pleased to know a lot of settled weather to come this week and temperatures will be on the up as well. So any showers should have more or less eased, but the odd light will continue the overnight and a lot of cloud. Temperatures dropping back to around 8 or 9 degrees. And that's the way we'll start tomorrow with a lot of cloud. And I think for western areas, we'll keep a lot of the cloud and there could be the odd shower continuing uh, through the day, particularly through the middle part of the day. But generally, we should see brighter skies developing in the east and sunshine spreading westward through the course of the afternoon. But uh, the breeze is coming in off the sea, so cooler in the far east, particularly for the coast, 17, 18 degrees, uh, temperatures above average in the west. And temperatures will continue to climb through the week. I think this is a bit pessimistic. There could be the odd shower, but a lot of dry weather, variable clouds, some spells of sunshine, and yes, temperatures climb. Well, that's all from the late team. Look north, we'll be back early tomorrow morning. You can also stay up to date with the BBC News app. Bye for now.